Hey, Jules Buzz Vegan, and as always, welcome. And for those who are new, I hope you can benefit from this channel. I wanted to talk about famous vegans in history, or throughout history, I should say. And as always, I will attach the article to the description of this video so you don't have to take notes. But I'd like to read about other people who are vegan and why they chose to be vegan or why they live that lifestyle. And this one is seriously historical because <laughs> it goes way back. Um, the odd thing is the author seems to interchange vegan and vegetarian. But I think by the different things that the individuals proclaim, you'll find that they were largely vegan. So the first one is Pythagoras, and you re you might remember the Pythagorean theorem in your math class from uh, way back in high school, maybe not. But anyway, um, Pythagoras was a famous philosopher and mathematician in 500 BC. So that's like before Common Era, before Jesus, 500 years before Jesus. And it says that he and his followers were famous for being vegetarians. In fact, the term Pythagorean diet was used instead of vegetarian for many years. And by years, they mean like hundreds of years. Um, the next one you've probably heard of is Plato. And Plato was around, remember how the clock goes? Before the year zero, when we restarted it for Christ, um, it was counting down. So Pythagoras is 500 and Plato is like 450. So Plato's younger, right? Anyway, um, many philosophers were vegetarian, including the famous thinker Plato. And he believed this, a society that eats meat requires more doctors. <laughs> so smart, right? And one of the things that he said was, the gods created certain kinds of beings to replenish our bodies. They are the trees and the plants and the seeds. It's pretty beautiful. People don't think of uh, plants and trees and seeds as beings, right? But they are entities. And of course, as a philosopher, he would certainly know that. Um, number three, we jump, jump a long way because those people were before the year zero. And we go all the way to Leonardo da Vinci, who was in 1442, right? It's kind of interesting that he helped with the Sistine Chapel and all of that. And and helping to build uh, St. Peter's Cathedral. God, I'm going to have to look more into that. I've, I've had the blessing of being in Italy and going to St. Peter's, but I didn't realize, is it that young? I'm going to have to look at that. Okay. Anyway, Leonardo da Vinci, like Pythagoras and Plato, Leonardo da Vinci was a vegetarian for ethical reasons. The lifelong inventor and artist famously said, my body will not be a tomb for other creatures, which is something we say today, right? I know Miss Ross says stuff like that. I know I say that. I'm not going to be a graveyard anymore. My body will not be a tomb for other creatures. Uh, the next is Nikola Tesla, whom you may not be familiar with. He's a pretty sharp looking dude. And he was an electrician. I mean, you know, he was famous for creating electrical devices. And he spoke about animal cruelty by saying every effort should be made to stop the wanton cruel slaughter of animals, which must be destructive to our morals. And isn't that so true? And I think that goes back to saying that when you're consuming carcasses, right? I mean, it actively affects your body. And nobody knew that better than Mary Shelley, who was the author of Frankenstein a long time ago, but now we're only talking a few hundred years ago, but still Mary Shelley was vegetarian and a strong advocate for animal rights. In fact, in her novel, Frankenstein's Monster, the monster is a vegetarian. Who knew? And he, this is coming from Frankenstein through her words. She had Frankenstein explain his food choices. He said, my food is not that of man. I do not destroy the lamb and the kid to glut my appetite. Acorns and berries afford me sufficient nourishment. The picture I present to you is peaceful and human. Kai, who ever heard that? <laughs> I just remember people with torches and him saying, oh, 
Let's go back to our profound Frankenstein monster. My food is not that of man. I do not destroy the lamb and the kid to glut my appetite. Acorns and berries afford me sufficient nourishment. The picture I present to you is peaceful and human. All right, on to Mr. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, one of the most highly regarded scientists of all time, once said, Nothing will benefit human health and increase the chances of survival of life on Earth as much as the evolution to a vegetarian diet. Nothing will benefit human health and increase the chances for survival of life on Earth as much as the evolution to a vegetarian diet. That was so insightful, right? And that's, you know, 50 years, more than 50 years ago. All right, these are phenomenal people, man, making a difference in the world, which is, of course, something we hope to do, right? It's certainly something I hope to do. The next one is Rosa Parks. You may have heard of that little girl, and she wasn't a girl. She was a fantastic woman who said, I am tired of being moved to the back of the bus. Forget you. Oh, my gosh. It risked her life to do it. So it says Rosa Parks, who's a civil rights activist. Uh, known for receiving uh, refusing to give up her seat was a vegetarian for over 40 years. And she wrote a book called Positive Energy. you got to love that because I just think anyone in touch with the truth of the world knows positive energy. Uh, but she, this is a quote from her. She says, for over 40 years, I've been vegetarian. Growing up, my family had little money. I had health problems early in life because of poor nutrition. Eating healthy is a priority for me. So it may have been for the animals, but it may have just been for her health. But even still, we should always be choosing our health because in doing so, we witness not only to the best way to eat for sure on the planet, but we provide opportunity for us to lessen our footprint because we're not using pharmaceuticals. We're not having to use excess doctors. We're not spending money on all of the gimmicks, um, but also we're choosing to live to ultimately serve. At least that's my goal, to live to serve. Okay, Coretta Scott King, right there in that same era. Of course, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s beautiful Coretta. Coretta Scott King was a champion for women, people of color, and the gay community, but she also spent the last 10 years of her life as a vegan because she knew that animal rights was a social justice issue too. What do you guys call them? Sentient beings? <laughs> they have rights, man. Okay, Mahan Das Gandhi. I always thought it was Mahatma Gandhi. I don't even know. It's Mahan Das Gandhi. But anyway, Gandhi, known to his good friends. Let's just call him Gandhi. <laughs> it says, okay, so maybe you know Gandhi was definitely of this lifestyle, but Gandhi wrote extensively about compassion for animals and he once said i do feel that spiritual progress does demand at some stage that we should cease to kill our fellow creatures for the satisfaction of our bodily wants amen gandhi i gotcha and then caesar chavez my local dude man east l.a what's up you know all of his farm workers and an influential labor, labor leader and vegetarian. 1992, he says, We know we cannot defend and be kind to animals until we stop exploiting them. Exploiting them in the name of science. Exploiting animals in the name of sport. Exploiting, exploiting animals in the name of fashion. And yes, exploiting animals in the name of food. Anyway, well, those are a lot of powerful people. I'm glad they included some women, of course. And I love the way they scan the decades. A 500 BC, wow. And of course, many people long before that and trillions of people in between. And of course, entire countries that were automatically vegan just for the virtue of the resources they had available to them, uh, which who knew? You know, I, but when you think about the pyramids and uh, every time that they find those mummies, which inevitably are the elite because they're kings and uh, queens and servants of kings and queens and people who had access to things, those people died of the same diseases we have today because they were wealthy enough to consume animal products. And inevitably their servants who were still busy just eating uh, vegan 
lived far longer and far healthier. And those rich people who are dead in the tombs show rotted teeth, uh, show, you know, impaired organs, uh, died sooner than they should have. Excuse me. Mom was doing your video. Jeez, right? <laughs> They're just doing their job. Anyway, that's it. Super interesting to me. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, I'm still going about my business. I look exceptionally tired because I am. You know, it was an emotional week for me, but I'm doing it. And I would love to support you in your comments. Like if you like, join us if you haven't. Until we talk again, stay vegan and... Be blessed.